Good afternoon to you, Mr. Deputy President, and of course, uh, fellow members. I want to say good afternoon also to everyone that's listening, both locally and overseas, to our farmers, fisher folks, processors, I would say my constituents. Good evening. I stand here to contribute, make contribution towards this budget debate. And I want to start by saying, how did we get here? And of course, I want to give thanks to everyone who would have contributed to the process. A lot of times folks think that Maybe we just come and discuss the budget here. But there is a process of consultations with the different sectors. I myself have participated in many of those through the years. And of course, COVID this year would have made it a little bit more challenging for a lot of persons in that the technology that would have been used may not have been readily available to several persons, especially in my sector of agriculture, the real man on the ground, I think he was out of the mix. Despite all of that though, we are here today, the folks at the different ministries and government agencies, I think they work hard, you know, because everyone was looking for the budget to happen earlier, um, but they was able to deliver. We didn't have to go into all next year trying to figure that out. So I think as a country, we have to applaud that. And we should be happy that we have a budget. As our sister said this morning, um, you need to have a plan. And, and the fact that you have something, that we have something to work with um, to discuss, it gives us a good starting point. So I want to start my statement in that regards. I want to say further, in response to my good brother, Senator Galway, on the other side, in terms of working together and he raised some important issues as it relates to being healthy and resilient and all of those things. Because once we want to be able to fight this disease, we have taught us from small, we need to be eating our fruits and vegetables and those things. And so, as a senator representing this very sad constituents, we want to say we are happy that you would be highlighting that. Because you could talk about it. But we are the ones that have to give you and the rest of the nation. But to do it, we would need the means. Yeah, we can't just do it so. If we don't have land, we don't have seeds, we don't have fertilizer. So we need to ensure that it's supported because we could have all the campaigns and all of those exhibitions and we'll stand there with open hands, with empty bags, waiting for the produce to come and it may never come. The good news is that I think the, the United Nations General Assembly only recently they have recognized the significance of these fruits and vegetables to the point that it's not only about supporting the livelihoods of our farmers, but also the whole issue of our health and wellness. We in Grenada, we know that we have done well. It's not all that bad. Eh? We have done well. We have been able to get fruits and vegetables. In fact, while I'm here, I actually got some fruits and vegetables a while ago that I want to share with some of the... I actually have some fruits and veg from our local farmers that want to show us the ginger, which they say is good for COVID. Um, I have citrus, bananas, seasoning, avocados, you know, and so on. So our farmers are producing... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, well, not one package for everyone, but you can have um, samples at the end of the day. <laughs> okay? So, but also our farmers are producing. And I wanted to make that point here today. I didn't bring fish because that's another discussion in terms of keeping it on ice, and we have ice machine issues, which we're going to talk about later on. But the fruits and vegetables. And the fact that next year, 2021, is the fruits and vegetables year 
I want to bring it here, and so it's a good start for all of us. In 2022, which makes it even good, eh? in, in, in 10 years period, 2022, it will be the year of additional fishing or fishing and aquaculture. So we we, 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 we are on the right track. We are on the right track. So I wanted to start off my presentation with this um, comments. Mr. Deputy President, I was trying to figure out where to start because there's so much points of starting. And I went back to the budget statement presented on the 2nd of December 2020. And I, I love it. Eh? I love it because it speaks the right language. And what is important is, once the language is spoken, it gives all of us something to hold on to and to work towards and to hold each other accountable. So if I speak just for 30 seconds, it says, um, beyond the goal of food and nutrition security, a strong and vibrant agriculture sector, these are nice words, will support economic growth, employment, and foreign exchange. So this is good. So I am a young person, uh, elderly, I want to invest. This is good statements. It says further, we must therefore seize the opportunity to redouble our efforts. You know, sometimes people say, if I'm working harder, <laughs> I need more pay. Eh? <laughs> so, and then the people say, well, no, but the, the budget allocation is shrinking. So how could I work harder? But I'm not getting the rewards. So he says we must redouble our efforts to achieve a modern agriculture sector. This is good. I spoke of this in my maiden speech about the new agriculture, so I interpret that is the meaning. That includes value addition production, youth involvement. It's good. The application of relevant technology. Excellent. Capacity building, training. Research and development, which was mentioned today, and when I look at the budget for agriculture and I see $48,000 for research and development, I sort of shrink. I know that figure is just placed there. I, I really didn't take it as the true figure because there is so much things that is happening for us to research on in agriculture to able to advise our farmers, advise our fisher folks, our processors, and so on. So I know that was not really true because other projects that might be taking place within the government sector, agriculture, would be doing some kind of research going on. So I thought that there might have been a note somewhere explaining further. And of course, adaptation, adaptation to climate change. And this is very important. I know our dear Senator Gawi speak in that context. It's, it's a very serious issue. So it is within all of those minds that I, I, I want to get, get ruling, Mr. Deputy President. So then I reflect on the theme of the budget. You know, it's funny. I said, like, I'm back to school when I was in Form 1 and I had to write an essay to say, Mr. Deputy Chair, uh, and my brother, I'm sorry to disturb, but just um, that others can follow, I would advise that the Honorable Brother, when he's quoting, um, he tells us the page or exactly what he's quoting from so we can follow you. Okay. Okay, well, I say you all are very familiar with this document, Senator. <laughs> page... 17, agriculture, that's where we're speaking. Page 17, section 9, 9.1, 9.11. Okay, within that page, okay? But it's a good point. It means that no one is sleeping here this evening. Okay. So, on the issue of the theme for the budget, we speak about 
towards 2025, and it's, it's good. And I looked at the matrix and all of those things to see the application. But then I went further, and it says recovery. I say, okay, recovery is good. That's a very important point. Because as a nation, we're trying to recover. We have been set back with COVID. We always have to agree with that. Um, you speak of transformation, but I'll come back to trans. And you speak of resilience. And I sort of understand resilience. You know, it's how do you withstand and, and handle. But the transformation part, I had some difficulty trying to understand the transformation. So I use technology and I say, let me go and see what Google has to say on transformation. And it says that something must change to the point that you're not to show what it really was before. But not only changing that you didn't know what it was before, meaning that you don't mash it up, but it must be better. And so I start looking and I may not have been good as a sister in reading out all these numbers, but I saw, for example, $3 million for the traffic light, $100,000 for agro-processing testing in, in, the, in the produce chem lab. And I say, but I see a salary freeze for no technician. That's a place that was my first job in my life as a lab technician. And to me, after 20-something years, the lab still doesn't have a technician, we wouldn't, but we still have monies for testing and so on. So that sort of worried me, and I say, I think the budget is still in debating, so there might be some discussion there. Then I see the propagating stations, $200,000. But I'm aware that we have a greenhouse um, set up in, in Maribo in particular that needs uh, some fan and some other electrical things that worth much more than this money. And I wonder, two years now it's sitting there. What is the transformation? That, that, that is, that is my, 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 my concern. Then I realize the farmers has to find some private approach to, to get the farms plowed. Land preparation, any extension officer will tell you it's very important to produce these products. And so I say, well, transform is to improve, but if you don't have it, what's the improvement when the farmer has to pay more? I say, well, maybe there is some subsidy the government might partner with offsetting some of its costs for the farmers to get the lands plowed. I'm not too sure. And then... I look at the land bank situation, and that's where I sort of get scared. Because I remember in my research from my maiden speech, I read that during the Geary's era, Geary era, land for the landless, cutting up lands, is part of the reason why they give for the whole issue with agriculture declining. And when I did my little intelligentsia, I learned that government has crown land that they want to cut up. Please. There are many private persons who have lands. And our dear senator, I'm so happy that you're here that we could discuss. Um, we had an idle land tax that we wanted to put, and I think maybe that was on hold, or maybe it's just silent. But the bottom line is that the government, in its own wisdom, recognized that there are many other lands besides Crown lands that are available that the government can go into different negotiations, put them in some sort of real bank, and persons can apply and, and, and get them, and some person might be away, so they don't want to be handling all of those lands, they're old. So let us, that to me is transformation than taking up the lands and cutting them up like some real estate operation that is taking place. And the list goes on, but if I spend time here, it will be just too long. And then we speak about the school feeding program. Excellent opportunity. And I know our dear Senator, um, leader of government business, we know we had a lot of discussion how we can improve um, the local supplies to the schools. The question is on that. You may say, why am I going there? I'm going there because what percentage of this $3 million that we allocate in We'll be buying our nice, local, healthy fruits, vegetables, fish, and poultry, and so on. 
That is my concern. Not the amount of money. Is where it's going to be spending. Because if we come and we complain, oh, so much money is being spent on overseas and import, then we must act in such manner to show that we're going to buy local, we're going to eat local, we're going to grow more of what we eat, and we're going to eat more of what we grow. That is the sink of the language. And of course, our youth in agriculture project, um, I know the money that is there is not the real money. I know you have a project coming, so I know that is also a sort of understatement. And so I applaud that, right? But we will speak more about, about that. Um, community tourism. Well, I learned a while ago it was a lot of it to do with signs and so on, but I think we need to do more with that. And so I asked myself, and I'm going to bring it up early so I get it out of the way. Why is it we tend to have all tourism project and construction taking place on the seaside, on the, along the shores, and putting so much of pressures of pollution and so on on our coastal lines, affecting our fisher folks, our fisheries, our tourists who maybe want to still go and swim? Why? You mean there is no more lands? Is there some law saying that it's only around our coastal zones we have to put these results. So if we're speaking about community tourism, I'm not saying there are not communities along the shorelines, but there are a lot of communities on the inside of our country that we don't have to be big 500-room hotels, but a lot of these nice little boutique hotels and so on we've been speaking about, where these stories can really intermingle and, and really be part of this community that is supposed to be, rather than them having to take a taxi and go to some place and say they community tourism. I, I, it's, it's, that's, I, I, I think, so I, I think we can do better there. Then I, I take a look and I see, and I personally went and checked out those fish markets throughout the country. And myself and Minister Joseph, we, Minister Bain Hosford, we had a nice meeting and we shared the views. And she actually expounded on those views in her presentation. And, but when I look at, so we have to do some work in Sotez in that fish market there, it, it's, it's, it's not right. And we agree on that. But I look at the budget of 180,000 and I hope I see it right in the budget. And last year we spent just $6,380. But what is interesting, Mr. Deputy President, is that the sales from ICE was over three hundred thousand dollars. Yet still, several of our ice machines are down. In fact, there are private persons selling ice to the fisher folks. Um, the Sotez fisher folks they are very good to get some benefit from the Marit program. So there were some good things, and I, I don't want us to lose sight of that. And there are other good things that is happening, which I will speak about in a while. So. We need to get the ice because that will affect fishing is our number one export, if we're not to show about that, eh? to over 20 something million dollars. And even within natural disasters, the hurricane and so on in, in Ivan, fish still remain up because the, 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 the blue economy, it's, it's the, one of the richest, it's richer than, 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 than the land that we're standing on today. So I believe that we should really act on this speedily. And then I look at Priya Lassini, and I say this morning, I'm so happy, because the numbers in the Priya Lassini move from about 30, and um, it's down to about seven, and, um, and this seven, most time, is doing other things. Yes, I see a lot of newspapers saying that, you know, they hold some people and they hold some other persons um, for stealing, but as I would have said before, we need to have what I refer to as community wardens, where these persons are within the community so they can, they know who those thieves, as we would say, are, rather than they're sitting in a police station and then they'll be reassigned. Because, of course, if the police has some emerging matter and we all would understand that, they want to call on that force. And then on the other side, the real purpose. And so at the end of the day, we'll come and make noise about it. But really and truly, if we do it, in that sort of way, it 
it would be helpful for everybody, safer and better. Um, we speak about export. In, I, I'll just go and show the, the, your budget um, information. And I heard the Minister for Trade, it was very nice. So, you know, marketing board, you need to do more and we do one. We know marketing board has their own challenges, but strike that. I think the institution is there and we have to support the institution to be able to do what it's supposed to do. I think that's the, the spirit we have to work with. But on the back end, I would have heard our finance minister say, oh, you know, for agriculture to really do good, you know, we have to, you have to be export, you have to, we have to export. And this is good so that we could provide more jobs, and that is how agriculture would really have a benefit. So I say about Roland, but we're doing the bushing, we're doing farm labor support, that provides a lot of jobs too. So if we also export, we would provide more jobs. But I want to make a point, because I know our farmers and fisher folks might be saying, you need to address this matter. Almost 10,000 farmers in this country would have at least one or two persons walking along with them, with them. I know our dear senator knows that. And if I've heard the definition right, I'm not a labor specialist. Once you work for an hour a day, you're employed. So if I work the 10,000 mats, and even if you say half of that, hire at least one or two persons, we could easily calculate the number of jobs with simple maths. So what I'm saying is that when we say those things, I've not seen the transformation. So I then take another look and we speak about, well, we need more jobs and we need the construction. And we all agree with that. Eh? Don't, let's, don't lose sight of that. And then I say, well, if we are doing these jobs, this is good. But if we spend $3 million to do these traffic lights, what would happen to those wardens that just be all around town managing things? Wouldn't we have to send them home? Or we have a place that we don't have no traffic light that we go find to put them? I even joked this morning with a friend and said, well, I know you normally have a free warden guy walking on top cemetery hill there that maybe he might even need to get a walk too because he's doing an excellent work and there's no traffic light up there. You know? I would say there's one traffic light that is working in Grenada. 90% of the time is the one in Paradise Bridge. Travel at every day. When there is no traffic light, it creates a little challenge. Other than that, I wonder. I drive through St. George's and I even call the, the head of the traffic in Tonga and I say, you know, keep the ladies as the traffic warden, please. Because when they're on the traffic, the traffic moved through St. George is so smooth and nice, you will not I called him personally, Mr. Langdon. I think he's not too well now, but I don't know. That's another research. But it, 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 it's a fact. That is my experience. Okay? So, and then the last part before I go into so some other things. I see, okay, people talking about the airport and why we should spend money on the airport and so on. And I don't want to go into that debate. The debate I want to go into is when it is said that, you know, if we have the airport, and I understand some of those challenges because, I mean, for my whole job and exporting and so on, we have issues of cargo compliance and we understand all of those challenges. We will have more facilities, cold storage facilities. We understand all of those things. And I think on behalf of the Exporter Association and other exporters, we will welcome that because sometimes you have to ship, like if you have an early plane like that leaving, say, three or four, say, six o'clock in the morning flight. And as a passenger, you have to reach three hours before. So that's three o'clock. The cargo going through the same area, they have to come at least two hours, so almost five hours, so sometimes 12 o'clock in the night, one o'clock in the morning, exporters have to be on the airport to get their stuff through and then clear enough for the, the passengers to pass. So I understand all of those things. My concern is we would have more flights coming in. And the history I've seen is that the more flights come in, 
is the more I would have to provide this airlift subsidy. Have it there just in case they don't meet their quota to, to sub. And that is my concern. So when everything comes back to normal, with more airlines coming in, I'm seeing us having to dig deeper into our pockets to subsidize these on-field um, flights when they cannot make it. The irony about this, Mr. Deputy President, is that save and accept a dedicated cargo line and one other airline, a lot of our export try to find themselves into New York where our own people are there, our own diaspora. And some of those flights that come in here with the passengers, they don't take any cargo to go back to the places like New York and so on because of the different policies and so on. It's a discussion that I personally have had along with my sector's colleagues to see how we can address that. I know there are issues around that in terms of the insurances and all of those things, but I think it's something that we need to work on to be more fair to our people. Because if we go back to the history, I'm not too sure what Gary would have said, but Maurice Bishop would have said, when the airport is established, planes will be leaving with our goods from Grenada. But the only how the planes will leave with goods from Grenada now is that I have to make sure that I have a ticket, and that is my carry-on and my other cargo that I would have to pay as a passenger. I think, to use the word of St. Agawi, we have to do better than that. So, I will spend a few minutes and say what is good. There are a lot of good things. The climate smart agriculture, the feeder roads, and I see all of those. And some of those, based on my personal involvement, I, I am involved in a lot of this, and so I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, crop insurance, I know we are working on it. I know the government is supporting this initiative. Um, I think it might be our omission. Um, it's not there this time. And I know the government will still make this contribution. But the problem is that if we're going to follow all of these little rules of F rules and this, I mean, a little bit of guy will say, well, um, you have to know there is some clause that he doesn't always hold. We know that government will still, but when the stakeholders don't see those things there in black and white, they get worried. And a lot of times those things get left out because why? The implementation rate and the execution is so low that you know, like it always get going down, like agriculture down, and I was watching these things, fisheries down, and I also got worried that I see tourism is just before agriculture. And I say, wow, like somebody catching up with somebody. Okay? So this, these are just some of my, my, my comments on that. I want to... Sorry about that, I had a mental block. Because I see the word freeze, and that, that's why we say that we have a lot of freezing of positions. I'm very worried. Particularly in the two industries for which I speak. Fisheries, we've known, if we look around, and I cannot call the names there, but a lot of the senior, all the fisheries officers, they are gone. The same thing in Ministry of Agriculture. And I was so happy that Brother um, Senator Bula is back because it is like a, another reinforcement. Um, I'm not too sure where he'll find himself eventually, but to provide that support within the Ministry of Agriculture. But himself, if he end up back in the Ministry of Agriculture by some chance, along with my good friend, Minister David, generals may have ideas and sit in the back room and they may put on the boots and they may go all out. But the real man on the ground who fighting day and night is the real infantry men. And they are not there in the Ministry of Agriculture. 99% of them, I'm sure, are retired. In fact, I was in a session only last week to deal with some climate resilience. Another nice project again, eh? it's lovely. Don't think I'm against those things. 
And, you know, the, the, the chairman of the session said, you know, it's a bittersweet moment, you know, because we've been working on this thing for so long, you know, and such and such who was working is retired. And, so, you know, I and all even almost nearly cry about this thing because, you know, you put your, all your effort into something and they sit back and say, oh, Lord, I'm not there to, to, you know, to help implement it. So it shows us that with all the good intention, <laughs> yeah, with all the good intention, we 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 having those issues. Of course, I, I hear in your brother Bola is 60. But there is something called planning. Succession planning. And I know Brother Maureen and the, the PS, since he came into the agriculture, you know, people we have different views on matters. He always speaks about that, but you know, sometimes <laughs> If the boat spring away well, uh, too early, he helpless. The time is, things is happening quicker. And it reflects on all of these individuals. It comes back to the whole issue. And I'm going back to my maiden speech. Just come 40 years for everything, and you will see what has happened in this country. Everything that happened in that span. So all the persons would have gone to Cuba, gone to wherever, and study and come back. We never was replacing the stocks because we feel the day forever. We never realized we'd have had this type of hard times where we have to have all these attrition policies. But what have we done in the last maybe 10 years, 15 years, with due respect to everybody's profession? Lawyers, doctors, engineers, um, Business persons, economics, um, psychology, not agriculture. So what really has changed? That all of a sudden, the maybe two, three hundred persons who were studying agriculture back then, like a new generation of persons, they don't know what. So now we say, well, we have to have youth in agriculture. So we, we're starting again, and it will take us maybe another four, five years. By that time, I gone 60, all of us gone 60. And what happens to our food security? That we know that we're getting laps right now. We may pass the budget. Money's may spend, things may happen. But in the next eight to 10 years, we might be sitting down and wonder, where is the food coming from? Who is there to prepare the food? So sometimes they say, how you make your bed so you shall lie. And I think we have a good chance to make a good bed before we lie down. So I look at it and I say, to my dear, dear Minister of Agriculture, I'm worried for him. I was speaking to a farmer and he said, you know, he's a good man. He come out and he see us and everything and he said, but you know, like they set the pack and all he end up with is Jack. I said, who are you? I said, I don't understand. He said, ah. Oh. He said, well, if the man is on bear jack, people will play cards like that, you know. You have to knock again for a shuffle. Mr. Bola. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bola. I know you is not another Trump. <laughs> so <laughs> I know you're not another Trump. You know, but um, yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's like that. Eh? It's like that. It's like that. It's like that. But I think it brings a good spirit. And so I think all of these things are going good. So in that context, I know sometimes we get the bell 10 minutes before, but I'm not too sure how much minutes I have again. I have time? Okay, good. So I want to go into some thoughts and suggestions and approaches that we can, with what we have, is how we do it. I'm not even asking you to take more money and to find more money. You might realize you need less money. And so, again, my good minister speak of 
organization and planning, which is so good. He, he started in the right place. We need to kind of refresh and put everything in perspective. And I endorse that. So, what do I propose? I, I come here today and I try to figure out every time I speak, I must have a topic sentence. I must have a, have a topic, a theme with which to communicate. And so, this is how much now. Senator Sinclair, sorry. I need to adjourn for five minutes. Okay. And then we come back and we continue in mid-flight. Okay, at what time? Wow. I thought I was wondering what time, you know, no, you no, move no, this time no. fast forward. No problem. No, no. The Thank chair you. Needs, the chair needs a five-minute break. Okay, no problem. No problem. No problem. So, we adjourn for five minutes. Okay. <laughs> You're on him with his time gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'll, I'll finish maybe before time. But I want to hear with his time auxiliary too. And the early thing, my marketing board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Remember, if you have flu symptoms, do the right thing and stay at home to avoid giving it to others. Remember, you can be infectious up to a week after developing symptoms, so rest up and take it easy. Prevent cold and flu by washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. That's the time it takes to remove most germs. No soap and water? No worries when you've got alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Community College, your only Indigenous college. We provide quality education and training opportunities at affordable prices. Our TAM CC alumni occupy 75% of the Grenadian workforce with international connections. We take you from where you are to where you want to go. For more information, contact TAM CC at 440-1389 or visit our website at www.tamcc.edu. GD. Tam CC. Unlock your potential. 
boys and girls. Join me, Neela, on GIS every Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. for The Reader's Circle. Grenada is on the road to re-energizing its economy, and a major part of that recovery is tourism. Our borders are open again, and that means visitors are returning to our islands and spending in our hotels, restaurants, markets, and bars. While revenue is welcome, what is most important is protecting the health of our citizens and visitors. Therefore, the industry has had to adjust quickly to this new reality. Strict and thorough protocols have been established throughout the sector. These protocols include health declarations from visitors upon arrival, screenings at our airports, health and safety protocols for all our frontline tourism workers, including the wearing of masks, frequent sanitizations, and new cleaning requirements for accommodations. Now, it's time for us to all do our part in ensuring that Grenada, Karakou, and Pitti Martinique is not only an outstanding, but a safe tourism destination. And so, in preparing for today's presentation, the theme of my contribution in terms of suggestions, recommendations for consideration, it says, rethink agriculture. Okay, rethink agriculture. So I'm asking the government, I'm asking the powers who has the, the, the post and others who would have taken on board the different recommendations to rethink it. And in this process, I want to also put forward on behalf of my constituents, from whom I would have also got inputs in this contribution. One, the whole issue of organization and governance is an issue that we need to look at. Our farmers, our fisher folks, the whole group. There are several little clusters of groups and so on trying to farm and so on, but there are challenges. And not that they don't want to. As I mentioned before, and I've had discussion with our good friends, fisher folks up in, in Sotez. I only recently had some dialogue with our fisher folks in Cali. Commission to see what, how they grow. All this is agriculture. So we must not lose sight of what agriculture is. As our good friend, Brother Galway said earlier, things change. Definitions of things change. And we have to understand those definitions and understand the context. So I wanted to, to say this. And so that is one approach we can look at. We also have another approach. And that approach is where you have, you create what I call a, a, a hub. A hub of technocrats. And they are technocrats, whether they are 8 years, 10 years, 15 years, and they know how to do administrative work and know how to call, make phone calls, to make connection to market and all of those things, because the farmers are out doing things. Eh? So they can have an office space in a community center, in some common ground, and they can have a mentor or two with them, maybe a marketing person, a bookkeeping person. And they now will provide support for, say, maybe four or five cooperatives or farmer groups in that area. In that way, we provide more value, we create more execution, and you don't have a set of duplicity taking place all over the place. So this place, for example, inside here, you could have a room and you have, we are technocrats, and we service it, we provide you service, and people do it, you know. Accountants does it. Accountants sometimes do bookkeeping for 20 different businesses and they get paid. So this money we have for youth in agriculture, that's why I say, how are we spending this money for what? And if we want to support the cooperatives and support the farmers, we cannot be cursing and say, oh, farmers already. We have to stop that. We have to stop it. 
The farmers are crying. I mean, the young fella in Sotez, and he, he just didn't go down in tears. The, the president of the Sotez Fisher Folks Organization. He says, sir, I really see what we really, we, we just can't. I want to tell him all the time. He said, you know, that's a good idea now. We'll see if we could do it. Spoke to the minister of cooperatives. I know it might have been too late to put it in the work plan. But you don't need no work plan for that. Because the youth in agriculture project are the money we have for youth empowerment and all those things. We could retool it. Because what I don't want us to lose sight of is that the very youth that we say we're targeting to empower and do all of those things. These are youth, if they are real jobs, they could walk in the morning and go in a teaching job in a bank in anywhere because they have all the different subjects and capabilities. In fact, the money will tell you some of them have degrees and masters. So it's not people that can handle themselves. It's just how we put them to work for this country. And that is the question. There's another part to the cooperatives. And that was a very important concern that the minister raised with me. And the minister said, you know, Sinclair, it's about 11 persons, I think, to form a cooperative. But sometimes you have four persons. They're working nice together. And they want to form a cooperative, but the law don't set up for that. So it's something that we have to work on, and I support her in that direction. If we can make some revisions so that we could be able to better. Because, you know, sometimes they say one extra cooks for the broth. You know? So sometimes four could work good, but because you have to get 11, the whole thing turned old mass. And I thought that was a very smart idea that we should really support her with and, um, and move forward. In terms of a national farmers organization, this is a big topic. But it's not so big. We think it's big. Because we have national football organization, we have national basketball. How do they operate? They have clubs, they have competitions, and they're doing things. They may have the challenges, is along that similar model. I am proposing that we look at that. I already speaking to some of my colleagues in the region, Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, who have similar models, like Barbados Agriculture Society. And I know my good Senator Bola is fully aware of some of those things. And I think that we have a good opportunity to, to look at those models and really make a difference for our farmers. Where they can be better organized. For example, right now, CARICOM has some consultation going on. The private sector is sitting there. And I recall there is not at the table. So they are making decisions maybe to import more and more goods from Europe or somewhere. And where is the farmers at the table? Always getting left. So part of my duty, part of my job, I'm in contact with them and we're going to champion and I'm looking for the support of my other colleagues so that we can have a representation. We speak of food import bill and all of those things. That is where we have to hold those discussions because the policies that the carry come will definitely impact what happens to us in Greenland. And then we go and ask for our sort of exemptions and let us fix it up front. The issue of welfare for our farmers and fisher folks is a personal responsibility I want to engage in. And of course, I seek the support of the government and others involved in that. For too long, our farmers, I know they don't want to pay NIS. And sometimes it's logistics, sometimes it's a lot of things. And I am calling on farmers. Let's get registered. It's a good thing. It's good for your family, it's good for your children, and all of those benefits. Please. And of course, with the organization farming, I think that would be able to sell better to them. I think also, from the fisher folks in particular, the lost at sea. You know, sometimes the fisher folk, they have to put money together to get gas to go and, and, and look in addition to whatever the government may do in, in, in looking. And that was some concern that was raised. And I say, well, you know, maybe we can speak to some of the gas companies. They spend a lot of money in all sort of giveaways. $10,000 allocation for gas for search and rescue. I don't think it's going to kill anybody. So that's a public call um, for that. We don't have last at sea regular. But it's something I think that we should be able to help and have it. And they don't accumulate it. If it's finished for the year and they only use 10 to 5,000, you just create a new one for the next year. Um, also, we, we need to look and see how the, the folks in the fisher, fishers in particular, the issue of the bends is a big issue. Now, Grenada has made a lot of progress because we have our chamber and so on here. 
But I think the issue of education seems to be a major issue from the dialogue with them. In Dong in Kalise in particular, there's a lot of divers. And speaking to one of them, he actually was lost at sea 24 hours, just hanging on to his water tank, his, his um, tank to, to survive. I was like, wow, I'm sitting by you. I see you're a hero, you know? And I say this to say that we eat the food, and we eat lunch, and we hopefully will eat dinner, and we don't think about those sacrifices and the effort that these folks make. And then we want him to come back and go and run a farmer's organization and to go and make a phone call to, you know, where is this support? It's not much because we already have some of the money allocated for certain things already. It's the strategy. And that's why I like the Minister David point of planning, organization, but he didn't come with the implementation, so I'm sure they're helping him with this part here right now. I want to move forward quickly before my time go. I speak a lot about the youth already, but we need to do something with this Maribo farm school. I need to be more than farm. We need to go farm and fishing. Fishing is our number one, but we don't even have a fishing school anymore. You know, so sometimes we rally on things, and then, as we mentioned earlier on, 60 years will come, and then we say, ah, where is it? So let us start putting things in place. This is, to me, when we start talking about resilience, that was a forget recovery. All of us will like recovery and transformation. So 20 years, we lose our fishing school, and we never even try to start back one. And we're happy. We're eating fish. And we don't even know how these guys are catching a the tail outside there. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities, which I don't want to go into beekeeping and, and so on, livestock and so on. There are a lot of, lot of opportunities, but one of which, though, I want to put on the table is that during the summertime, I'm not too sure if you know right now, maybe 15 years ago, almost every summer, children was going and learn computers. I guess all of us know computers now that we're even teaching it from our home, you know, each one teach one. And it's interesting that people who used to be teaching computer science, all that, that business may be almost closed now. Could you imagine if the same thing happened with children going and learn about fishing, learning to plant a nutmeg tree, learning to milk a goat, learning to rear a rabbit in the summertime? If the same theory holds that each one teach one because you learn so much that you could teach among yourself. So this is something I think we could take on board. And all that is part of it, you money for it. So that we don't wait till they get a master's and whatever degree. And then they say, oh, we're looking for a job. And we don't have jobs, so let's put a program. You might be smart today and want to do that as a government. But 20 years from now, a new generation will be here. And they may not be so kind as you. And there might be more problems. So let's put a proper system that can guarantee a more stable future, as maybe our full parents would have done. Scholarships. We speak a lot about that. But I want to see more scholarships, real scholarships. Let us send some more tertiary in agriculture. And maybe tomorrow, when the government side comes, you might be able to do a quick research and tell us how much persons over the last five years or four years gone to do some degrees in agriculture so we could say, okay, yes, food security, eat, by, eat what you grow, and farmers can know there are technical people to help them. Okay? The issue of greenhouse technology, all of those things, because you have that, you know, climate smart. It's just how you how you tailor it. So I'm I'm good with you there, very good. Um, but certification, and I think that was mentioned. I'm not to show sure this morning. is important. We have the NTA, and we need to do that right now in the GCNA. We have a partnership that we are almost finalizing to train young nutmeg farmers in level two production for nutmeg. And so this is something that we could repeat. And maybe again, whilst we're worrying about money in the first instance with this project, we can get some of the same youth money to do that for nutmeg, for cocoa, for thing, for beekeeping. And let's do the thing properly. So 20 years from now, if we're still alive, for those of us who remain, we could say, but yes, we did something good in shooting. The labor support program, and uh, it's funny that it's written in, in I, I had to do some investigation, it's written as strengthening rural opportunities. Nice fancy word, lovely. 
But it's basically, most of it is for labor support with the farmers. I know the farmers are concerned about they're not getting proper work, and sometimes it's because the persons who are doing the work, they're not trained. And again, I'm not speaking to the converted. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking to the converted. You know the story. So maybe again in our poor youth money, let me train persons how to dig a drain. Let me, so when they leave, they are certified farm labor support under some NVQ, CBQ, and if they have to go and work in another country, they could go and then we, we could be say we could export labor. And we know the remittances and so on could add back to the country. That to me is transformation. But if we're just going to cut the bush thing, go home, take the money till another one come. In two days, that money done. And they know better off. I don't think it's fair to us. And the farmers don't think it's fair. In some cases, some farmers send them back. And I don't want to call a name here. I want to say that the, the bushing program, which I kind of put as a farm labor support, because as a young boy, you know, you see someone say, I go in the bush. They're not going by the side of the road in bush. They're going in the lands. That's what they really mean. And I want to put the, the bushing program in particular, and a little bit with the farm labor support, we should really get the, the Solid Waste Authority more involved in this process. Because this bush cut, it sits by the road sometimes for days, I'm driving on the road every day. And I always wonder where this bush is going when it's cut. And then the place looks so nice when it's finished cut. And I say, but this is like cutting a yard, it's like landscaping. So I don't know why we even call it the bushing in the first place. Maybe it's just our colloquial name and you have a different name for calling it. But I think if we take this, and we put this under the solid waste authority, and you build different composts and stuff throughout the country. All of this is part of a whole green climate, and you get the same persons involved, and you package this thing, and then you go back into a whole organic system. To me, that is transformation. But I think further that some, I think they say Gary did that once, and they say Gary was a madman, but when he thought of that, I say, but we can then Beautify our communities. Plant nice flowers along the road. We can get our folks in the diaspora, even us ourselves, who, I farm La Dig, you farm St. James, wherever, I gonna fund $100 for 200 feet of road to put some nice flowers, and then the whole of Grenada can be beautified in such a diverse way that that in itself would contribute to just local sightseeing. It would enhance your whole community tourism and all of those set of stuff. That, to me, is transformative. Because these persons can then continue maintaining and all of those things, and, and they have that pride in the community. Then you can start learning about people who know about biology and insects and flowers. And I, I, some, so, so, I don't know. It's, I mean, I don't know if I was dreaming when I had these thoughts, but it's good to dream. In Costa Rica, said the deputy president, at the end of the day, in the markets, they take all the, the waste and they put it into compost and they use this vomus thing with the worms and all those things. So all of this could be part of this whole encompassing thing. Where the, who will hire the, the, the folks? I don't know if it's the solid waste or if they will hire them accordingly, but I want to, to, to suggest that. And it worries me, eh? It worries me, and it comes back to the Ministry of Agriculture, that the Ministry of Agriculture, which normally would handle this labor support for the farmers, they didn't handle that this year. And I wonder, and I say, well, I know people are retiring, there's less labor. If there's a loss of confidence in the management capabilities within the Ministry of Agriculture, that they start moving out things from the Ministry of Agriculture, it worries me. Close down the farm labor, the, 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 the what do you call it, the, the machinery you keep private people. But now and and the farm machinery thing, Mr. Deputy President, <laughs> if we really want, I don't know what the problem is. The problem is maintenance, as the case may be. But this could have easily go down to the police garage, where we have trained mechanics who have full capabilities, who are doing all government vehicles, all kind of stuff. I think we could have sent them down there. And so the police, so if fixing is a problem, they could do all the fixing and all this stuff like that. So. 
I don't think we should really close this thing. No, I think this thing should be relooked. I think the minister mentioned that in, our, in his presentation the last time. So I'm moving on quickly. Prayer last year, I spent a lot of time on that. And all I want to say on this is that we're promoting a camera, which is good. But you know, Mr. President, if I'm a farmer and I want to go and buy this camera and it's $2,000, and you, as a regular man in your home, want to buy the same camera, it's 2000, two of us paying the same thing, but our interest is different. So we are calling on the government side. So let us see how we can have some concessionary duties of for our farmers if we are pushing them, and we have been pushing them in that direction, um, which is, is good, and they've been holding people in that area. I want to move quickly to fisheries. As I mentioned earlier, it's one of our major area of, of exports. Um, we had recently a good public-private partnership with the government and, and the Southern Fishermen Association and Spicel Fish House. But what it shows is that if the government really supports you to get strong, when you're strong, what happens? So we speak about our foreign partners are so strong, China, America, England. If they wasn't strong, they would not have been able to help us. So we build strong institutions, we build strong organizations so they can help. All right? We have the jetty, and there's a burning concern in, in St. Max. And St. Cox, please, see what could be done. You have three fish, market, three fish markets, three different landing sites, but they have to pull up the boat on stone and all kinds of things like that. See what could be done, please. That is a special plea for the people of St. Max. Um, the ice machine, well, I spoke about that, and so I, I am confident um, that some action is going to take place there. But we need to do some value added in fishing. Salt fish is a big export, so it's a big import in this country. We used to be doing salt fish, smoke fish, so training, youth, and well, <laughs> I think the message is clear. Where you have to spend the money. We could export it, but we could also use it locally. Um, I know there is a project right now that has been contemplated to do nice fillet and, and, and so, which is a value added export, and we congratulate that and we look for the full support of the government, which I think they've been getting already in this regard. Because I look at some figures. St. Vincent, for example, in 2019, I think exported out 18 million pounds of, 18 million dollars worth of fish. And they plan to do some development in Bakeway, which we want to add 20 to that. So immediately we would move from a 25 or 22 to, <laughs> we, we are overtaken by St. Vincent. Okay? I want to go down to look at poultry. Poultry, to me, again, needs some transformation. The biggest challenge we have here, we all know. People say the challenge is feed. But the challenge is not feed. I didn't go to school for long. I didn't learn a lot of technical things. But sometimes, the more you dig, the more you would find gold. And so, the poultry policy, which I know my dear Senator Vola is fully aware of. Well, you might be aware, I think. Speaks about disagreement, and I will call it disagreement, between the Caribbean Agro, and this is sent in 1976, 1977. We need to look at that, because the policy spoke about looking at it and see how we can make it more conducive for our local poultry persons. And this is a dialogue that myself, the Poultry Association, and of course the Minister for Agriculture already start dialoguing on. And we have to see some movement there. I visited one of the farms, family farms only on the weekend. And what this young gentleman is doing is remarkable. We have to support him. And not only him alone, we have to support the whole poultry industry. Because I learned that in one month, the equivalent chicken, poultry that is imported in the country, what we consume it works out to about 35,000 birds. That's what we eat every Every month, that's the equivalent. Um, so, based on the amount of persons in the country we look at, so we need to look and see how we can support the poultry. Um, he has some challenges, though. 
The issue of finance, that's a big issue. I went on page five, but it's okay. Finance is a big issue. And I say, you know, we cannot go to the banks anymore for, because when we invest in our culture, it's investment. When you go to the banks, it's for a loan. <laughs> so I understand why banks give problems, because they don't see the investment part of it. So I am calling on the GIDC, I think, could do a better work. Let us, we have a lot of friends and family in the diaspora who have little monies that they may put in a bank here. And they put it because they think it may help our own people. But really and truly, he ain't helping. So maybe if they could channel it through some investment operation through the IDC, so you invest in this in, um, business, you invest in that. As well as you invest in stocks and bonds, they might get more value and contribute better to this country. I believe also, from the financing standpoint, the issue of the CBI, we need to have some more focus on agriculture. I know there might have been some that fail, some little initiatives, but I think it's skewed a lot to the tourism sector. Maybe that is not true. Maybe it's my perception, but maybe if we do a matrix to see industry poor investment, we may be able to see the reality. So I think we could do a lot of these things with all these banks, even GDB. Is, is a problem. I spoke to, to a, a mother on, on, on Friday. I mean, she almost wanted to cry and she didn't want to let me off the phone. She said, our son went to GDB, problems, $40,000. He went to a local bank. <laughs> they say, oh, you bring your land paper, bring your salary slip, I think, and bring some life insurance for $40,000. But if you want a car for $60,000, they say, you'll get it easily. Craziness. We have to support. We can't wait on the banks, because the banks, they will do whatever they want, and then at the end of the day, we don't have no food to eat. And all the nice things we want to see happen that is transformative is not transforming. The issue of the land bank, well, I spoke about that already, but one thing I want to say on the land bank is the land policy part, which I hear is in illegal affairs and so on. But I was speaking to an old gentleman a few weeks ago, old mentor. He said, but you know, what we can do all we need to do is to just say 75 to 100 feet back from the road, you could build. And then in the back, you have your, your agriculture. So it would help in, in that way. That's 15 more minutes? 10. 10, okay, great. No problem. Good. That's okay. So that takes me here. I did with the airlift already. Uh, you have to do with. We need some interministerial coordination. I think we need to be speaking more to each other in terms of the ministries. And the other two big areas I want to speak on is the issue of agro-processing. Um, I'll leave agro-processing for one second. I want to speak of, I spoke about marketing board. We need to integrate marketing board. I believe that marketing board need to go back to the Ministry of Agriculture. It was doing much better when it was there to solve its real mandate and purpose. And so we can be able to connect and organize markets better um, for the farmers. Of course, the commodities, we know its significance, but that wouldn't minimize the overall contribution that that is doing. I think that when marketing board is focusing on agriculture, it's better. It provides more support to the Ministry of Agriculture because the Ministry of Agriculture sometimes is functioning and you cannot connect farmers to market. But marketing board is for the market. Marketing board also needs to be connected to the school feeding program. So when I speak about the education, I three point something million dollars earlier on. Marketing board should be supplying the school feeding program or hospitals and institutions. Because that we know when they supply, it's local. If they're not supplying, then who else is supplying? And what are they supplying? The other two key areas I would speak on is one, to deal with the I believe, um, Mr. Deputy President, I made two, I think my two main points I want to wrap up with. The issue of greenhouse technologies. I believe that we need to have like a, a bank, like a, you do like a, a five acres or three acres of, of greenhouse yes, cut up in different quarters and persons lease it and, and they lease it to do their production. And so you may have a bank of maybe two acres in Sotez, five acres in, in Granans, wherever it is. So then, and that again could be funded through a CBI, through whatever. And then if I want to produce cabbages, I go and I list this for one month or one year, just like when you list an apartment. 
and you go and you make your production, when you finish, you go your way. Because if you do that, you also connect to market. So that is my model I want us to look at. With the, with, rather than giving that little farmer here a greenhouse, a farmer, that is a kind of if, if putting strain and even monitoring and managing these things. Similarly, we could do a similar approach to deal with the small ruminants, because I see we try to put more money in the abattoir, when yet still, we keep importing animals to go in the abattoir. We need to have our own animals here going in the abattoir. Okay? So this is my, my contribution there. I want to also speak on the cocoa and the nutmeg. There is work happening there. We have been doing some value added, both cocoa and nutmeg. But we have some issues, road access, and I know there are some work doing on that, so I wouldn't cry there too much. But the whole issue of doing more with agro-processing and value addition, you know we are cash-strapped, and everybody know that. But we are seeking partners um, so that we can be able to create that evolution and transformation in those regards. So that is what I would say. Crop insurance. Again, I know this is a discussion that is happening. I think I mentioned that already. Okay? Then, agro-processing. I think that is where everybody would want to, to know about agro-processing. Sir so Deputy President. Nutmeg, that's nutmeg hot sauce. This is some, not a tambran sauce. Juve chocolate, herbal teas, cassava and breadfruit flour, honey. See, so the point is, and I think that was said this morning, eh? we must not live here, and the farmers will not feel, and I will feel daunted that things are happening. Financiers, bankers, other investors who are looking on must not feel nothing not happening. Things are happening despite our pronouncements. But you see, what is happening is routine. Because you want to have maybe this year ending up in two containers going to China, Japan, but this person cannot even go and get a loan for ten thousand dollars. In fact, you have to get a life certificate, a birth certificate, and all. So what I'm saying is, this eleven million dollars maybe that we speak about that is frozen. And you will say, well, it's frozen, and accounting wise, it don't exist. Eh? It's just that it wouldn't be a cost coming in. But we're finding money for a lot of other little things. And I believe with the agro processing, if we invest maybe less than $5 million and build a multi purpose agro processing center, and this now would be used in a shared manner. So, you cut it up. You have for uh, baby sauces, for juices, for different type of processing mechanism. And I could come and rent a space and make my production, pack up my bag, I go. Next week, I rent. Um, but uh, Luis come in, he rent. And if we do that, we use our monies more wisely and we create transformation. Rather than, I want to... <laughs> apply for a loan for 20000 you apply for 40000 and all of us fighting to do something. And then we have a big issue. The issue of exports has to do with our food safety standards, our HACCPs, our British Retail Consortium standards, and my God, I mean, big institutions, GCNA, COCO, marketing body, can't you help to even do those things? You don't even have money to do it in the proper way. How we expect, I mean, Michelle Confectionaries and so that to happen. And then we want to say, well, we want to transform. I mean, in agriculture, I'm around for a while. And what we put in on the table can transform. However, what is the beauty about that? Again, I don't know how much money we have in, in for the youth, but not for the youth again, because eh? they are capable. We build this thing, you put them to manage this stuff, so that the whole place is has up on plan, all the documents. So when I come inside here to produce my product, all these young technocrats would be doing all the bookkeeping, all the quality job, because they're capable. And the product is living there with a proper stamp of approval, and not wondering what Tom doing in the back of the kitchen or under the house, and where he get it. And so he can't even make enough to even make an order. This to me, if it's the only thing that you take all the money and find a way to do, I think Grenada would be better off. Not only 
for us, but for the farmers, the family. And then we wouldn't even have to worry about fighting and waiting about this project jobs, about a project go start here and after thing we got. Because when the project done, you know what happens? Well, I, I live in the rural communities, and I know about seven of us from there. When construction is done, what is up? Agriculture is up. They go in the lands because they have time on their hand. And you could see that. So in the COVID, what has happened? No construction. Other people went to the lands. And so after the thing, you see a lot of one away, all these goods come out. So this would make a big difference with all the products our sisters speak about that spoiling. It's not spoiling because we really want it to spoil you know? It's spoiling because we don't have the means. So we continue to be pomi one. So, Mr. Deputy President, I want to mention we need to keep our focus on the flowers and all of this industry because cut flowers is a very important industry. Again, the youth. Sorosop, which is like number two in our export. And if we don't careful and we provide a sort of support to Sorosop industry, especially in terms of the defense, in terms of the pest and disease, the same effort that we are putting in with the COVID, because it's the same issue, you know. It's the same issue. The, the issue about it, Mr. Deputy President, is because things that affect the plant are really killing us. So we don't bother. With COVID, we're worried because we know if you don't have no one of us go dead. It's the same effort. It's the same effort. We have to put with the defense for source up. And in fact, I would want us, uh, I'll five more minutes at the end of me. Yeah, you have to wrap up now. Okay, good, right. I'm wrapping up now. And it's the same effort with golden apple, which we need to do some work on. I think I saw it, it went off the table. This was a $3 million in um, export from Grenada many years ago. We had a fruit fly issue. And if we can get this back, we can do wonders again in this country. So with these few words, my colleagues, Mr. Deputy President, and of course, my constituents, I trust that you would consider. I saw you taking a lot of notes. I know you're not a journalist, and I expect you to come back tomorrow and give us some good answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. And I must indeed say, for your maiden voyage in our budget debate, you had all of us a week, and you kept us on the edge of the seats. I thought your ideas were extremely revolutionary. And you know, I suppose that is testament to young brains and youth and the vigor and energy you bring to this particular topic as you make your deliberation in the Senate. I also want to say that I thought Senator Sincere for a maiden voyage also did well because in any forum like this where you're coming the first time to do a budget debate, it can be a daunting challenge, especially with all the documents that you have to deal with now. <laughs> and I know the challenge with it coming digitally as well. So, Senators, we're going to end the session today. We're going to adjourn to 9 o'clock tomorrow morning promptly for us to restart and hopefully complete our session tomorrow. So with that said, I formally adjourn the Senate to 9 o'clock tomorrow morning.
can make you and others sick. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. If you don't have a tissue, use your elbow. Wash hands often, especially after coughing or sneezing into a tissue. A protected area is a clearly defined geographical space recognized, dedicated, and managed through legal or other effective means to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem services and cultural values. The terrestrial protected areas of Grenada include Annadale Forest Reserve, Grand Bra Forest Reserve, Grand Etang Forest Reserve, High North Forest Reserve in Kariyaku, La Vera Ramsar Site, Mount Gazo Forest Reserve, Mount Hapman National Park and Dove Sanctuary, Mount Morris Forest Reserve, Mount St. Catherine Forest Reserve, Perseverance Protected Area and Dove Sanctuary, Richmond Hill Forest Reserve. Forests play an important role in protecting Grenada's biodiversity. Respect protected area policy and regulations. Help secure our forests now for our future. A message from the Jeff UNDP Ridge to Reef Project and the Ministry of Agriculture's Forestry Department. Stay up to date and informed with the latest developments in Grenada while on the go. Subscribe to the Government Information Services social media platforms. Get updates on your mobile devices for our live programs.